Hi everybody. So it's the Christmas season and I thought it would be fun to uh, make some videos talking about Christmas entertainment that means a lot to me. Things that I enjoy watching every December to get myself into the Christmas spirit, to enjoy the season, remember my childhood, all that happy horse shit. And I wanted to do something a little different. I didn't want to talk about the sort of the Christmas canon, like the classics that everybody likes or everybody enjoys. I mean, Miracle on 34th Street or the Rankin Bass specials or Charlie Brown Christmas, all that stuff. I mean, I like that stuff. I, I enjoy it. I watch it myself. But there are some other movies and TV shows and miscellaneous forms of entertainment that I enjoy every Christmas that really make me feel like it's Christmas. And if I miss out on those, it doesn't quite feel the same. So I'm going to talk about some of those. And uh, today, in the first part, I want to talk about some Christmas movies that might not be your typical Christmas movies that you think about when you imagine Christmas movies, but they're very special to me and I'd like to share them with you. And the first film on my list is The Ref. It's the story of a master thief who blows his big retirement score on Christmas Eve and is forced to take an affluent family hostage to avoid being captured by the cops. But there's only one problem. Their relatives are coming for Christmas dinner. It's a really funny, dark comedy. Dennis Leary is in it. Uh, Kevin Spacey, Judy Davis, just a really outstanding cast. And such a funny, funny movie. There are some great lines in it. Uh, Dennis Leary as as the thief has some really funny bits where uh, he interacts with Kevin Spacey's mother when the, the relatives arrive for Christmas dinner and she is just such a bitch and such a harpy and uh, Gus, Dennis Leary's character, gets some great lines off on her, talks, uh, tells her that her dead husband isn't actually dead, he's just hiding, which is a really funny moment in the film, which I just ruined for you if you haven't seen it. But it's just a really good movie and not only is it funny, not only is it really sarcastic and really acerbic and a, a good showcase for Leary and also for Spacey and for Judy Davis, but it, it actually is a good Christmas movie because it talks about the, the things that we both love and hate about the Christmas holidays. It centers around this family dinner that, that nobody really wants to be at, or at least that, that Kevin Spacey and Judy Davis, the, the couple, don't really want to have. They're having marital troubles and they don't really get along with their relatives and this is just like a duty to them. And boy, haven't we all been there having to put up with the relatives around Christmas because it's just what we do. God, I, I, I've had to do that a lot. Uh, and it, it's something that we can all relate to. And then, but so that's the negative side of Christmas that we can all relate to and go, Christ, I know, isn't that the worst? But then there's also the positive side of rediscovering your love and your feelings for the people who really are important to you and who you really do want to spend time with. And uh, discovering the importance of giving thanks and of friendship and of forgiveness. And there are, these themes are in the movie as well. And uh, it's got all of that. And plus, as I said, it's just a really funny movie. The Ref, if you haven't seen it or you don't usually put it into your Christmas rotation every year, if you have such a rotation, uh, you should consider checking out The Ref. Next on my list is Bad Santa, which is quickly becoming a modern holiday classic, at least for some of us. It's the story of the worst department store Santa Claus you've ever seen, who happens to really be a thief who is using the gig as Santa to case the joint for a post-Christmas robbery. Bad Santa stars Billy Bob Thornton as the bad Santa in question, and Tony Cox as his partner in crime and helper elf in their cover jobs. It also stars Lauren Graham as his girlfriend. It stars uh, Bernie Mac, the late Bernie Mac, and also the late and very much missed uh, John Ritter in a really, really, really funny performance. I believe it was his last performance on film, or at least his last major performance on film before his death, and he is so funny as the store manager uh, who knows there's something not quite right about Billy Bob Thornton's character, but is a little too queasy to come right out and say it. And as I mentioned before, Bernie Mac also, who is so fucking funny in this movie. A really funny movie, really, uh, like uh, The Ref, a really dark comedy, but one that appreciates the sentimental side of Christmas, although it takes a very cockeyed view of it, uh, and really makes you work for the, uh, the sentiment that comes just a, in a little trickle at the end. Um, just a really, really funny movie. And like uh, The Ref, and like some of the other films that I'm going to mention in this video, centers on criminals. Some of my favorite Christmas movies. Uh, 
are movies that center around criminals experiencing uh, the Christmas holiday. And maybe that's because Christmas, at its best, I think, awakens within us this need or desire to reach out to the outcasts. And who are more outcast in our society than, uh, than criminals, especially sort of street-level criminals like uh, portrayed in The Ref and in Bad Santa, people who literally have to steal to make their living. Uh, they are spurned by us, and yet somehow they represent this class of people that have been separated, that we want, despite matters of the law, despite logic, to reach out to on Christmas and to make them a part of our family and to embrace them. And it's, uh, it's, it's a really interesting Christmas theme that is explored in The Ref and also in, in Bad Santa, which is such a funny movie. I laughed so hard when I first saw it in the theater that I would have made a scene if there had not been other people in the theater laughing just as hard as I was. Next on the list is Die Hard, the story of New York police officer John McClane, who happens to be on hand when a team of international terrorists take over Nakatomi Plaza in Los Angeles during a Christmas party where one of the attendees just so happens to be Detective John McClane's estranged wife. Movie people talk about Die Hard a lot as a classic 80s action film, and indeed it is. It's one of my favorite action movies. But it's also a Christmas movie. We tend to forget that it's centered around uh, Christmas. There's a Christmas party going on when uh, Alan Rickman and company show up and crash the party. It, and it has these same Christmassy themes that I've been talking about uh, in my discussions of uh, Bad Santa and the Ref, of uh, family connection, of John McClane. Yes, of course, he, he's, he's the lone hero. He needs to persevere and save the day and defeat the, the bad guys, but he also wants to save his wife. And not only does he want to save his wife, he wants to reconcile with his wife. He's realizing that uh, he, he wants to make their marriage work. That's why he's there. He, he wants to come and get his wife, and he loves her, and he wants, to, he wants them to be together. And this is sort of the ultimate act of uh, reconciliation, of saving her and, and her fellow partygoers from this, this terrorist group. And they're, you know, he, the, using the, uh, the, the gift wrapping tape to attach the gun to his back in that classic bit. Uh, just a lot of Christmas trappings all around uh, the action in Die Hard. Not a typically cited Christmas movie, but one of my favorite Christmas movies nonetheless. Next up is Eyes Wide Shut, the story of a doctor whose insecurity about his marriage leads him to discover a sinister shadow world where the wealthy come to play anonymously and where learning the truth could cost him his life, and it all takes place during the Christmas holiday. Eyes Wide Shut was the final film completed by one of my very favorite filmmakers, Stanley Kubrick. And although it takes place during the Christmas season, and it has a lot of uh, Christmas stuff in the background, Christmas decorations and Christmas trees and Christmas music every once in a while, it is not a typical Christmas movie. The reason why I listed on this video is because it has become a favorite Christmas movie for my wife and I. In fact, we not only watch it most years around Christmas, but whenever we put our Christmas tree up, we decorate the tree to the sounds of the Eyes Wide Shut soundtrack, which not only includes some really beautiful classical pieces uh, by Leggetti and Shostakovich, but also some uh, renditions of classics from the American Songbook, like When I Fall in Love and things like that. Just a really great movie soundtrack, and it's become our Christmas decorating theme music. The movie itself is one of my favorite Kubrick films. It is a dreamlike, hypnotic film. It's deeply absorbing. It's very disturbing. It's uh, and yet very beautiful in its way. Just exquisitely shot by Kubrick. Really at the top of his game as a director here. Good performances all around from Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman, who play the the lead couple, and were actually married at the time. Uh, and just uh, and some great uh, supporting performances as well. Um, and just a really good, really good movie, and uh, one of my favorite films, whether it's a Christmas movie or not, and a, a movie I always enjoy returning to. And the last film on my list is Batman Returns, which sees the Cape Crusader facing down the triple threat of the Penguin, Catwoman, and scheming evil industrialist Max Shrek, and it all takes place around the Christmas holiday. Batman Returns is certainly not a typical Christmas movie, and it's not even really that great of a movie, but 
it's Batman mixed with Christmas. And you're not going to go wrong with those two elements combined as far as I'm concerned, especially when it's the Christmas holiday. Batman Returns is a movie I always love to watch around Christmas. It's Batman doing shit during Christmas. What more do you want from a Christmas movie? So those are five atypical Christmas movies you might want to check out if you don't usually associate them with Christmas. I'll give an honorable mention also to the classic uh, Milos Forman film, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, which is not primarily a Christmas movie, but has a very important, very lengthy scene taking place during a Christmas party. Uh, very good Christmas movie for that reason, and just a great movie all around. So, grab yourself uh, a cup of eggnog or wassail or whatever the fuck you have. I'm just having coffee. And sit down on the couch with your loved ones, or if you're all by yourself, uh, just sit down and clutch a pillow maybe and, and, and weep softly for your wasted life. And watch one of the Christmas movies that I just talked about. An atypical Christmas movie. One that not everybody gets around to watching. Not one of the Christmas canon type films, but good movies that involve Christmas nonetheless.